Hi, this is Toby for Cashuras.net. In this video, I'm going to attempt to do a hands-on review of my Blackmagic Pocket Cinema Camera 4K after living with it for two weeks in rainy London. We're in the Leaden Hall Market here in central London, somewhere in the city of London. I don't even know where we are. It's been raining all day. Hopefully, this is not going to be a waste of a day. So I've decided that instead of blabbing on about the features of this camera, which you're probably very well aware of already since you're watching this video, I'm going to go over my favorite three features and also features that I really am not a big fan of. Ever since the Blackmagic Pocket Cinema camera was announced back at NAB this year, the sort of pocket kind of name in the actual model name has been sort of frowned upon and made fun of. It's not a pocket camera anymore. I mean, this thing is much bigger than the original camera. This is not a pocket camera anymore, but for me, this is not really a big issue. I'm a big fan of the way this camera handles. This very much reminds me of a, of a 5D or a DSLR. It feels sturdy in the hand, despite the polycarbonate material, which actually makes the camera very light and much lighter than a DSLR, in my opinion. This feels great. Uh, for kind of handheld setups, if you are using a stabilized lens, um, unlike the one I'm using right now, uh, you can actually make some really decent and fantastic shots with it. Uh, for me, the layout of the buttons is very useful, uh, very handy, it's quite ergonomic. Uh, again, very much like a DSLR. You have your uh, wide balance button, you have a shutter, you have your ISO button. You have this little dial, which is pretty much a, a, a carryover from the DSLR days. The form factor is really not it's really not one of my favorite features, but it's not a feature that I dislike. It's something that I'm totally okay with. Moving on to one of the things that I really love about this camera and a huge plus is of course the image quality and the sheer amount of options of codecs and formats that you get. You can do 4K DCI in RAW, either lossless 3 to 1 or 4 to 1, or you could do ProRes, either in HD or 4K. The RAW image quality speaks for itself, 4K DCI, in regardless whether it's lossless 3 to 1 or 4 to 1, you can do fantastic things with this uh, format in DaVinci Resolve 15 which you actually get a free version of the paid software, the full copy of Resolve Studio. Uh, you get this included uh, with the purchase of this camera, which is absolutely great. The other favorite feature of this camera that I have is the incredible five inch touchscreen on the back and the absolutely top notch industry leading for this classic camera menu. A lot of you guys are familiar with the Ursa Mini Pro and the Ursa Mini and their incredible menu system. And you get the same brilliant and intuitive menu in the Pocket Cinema Camera 4K. And this is paired with, for me, one of the best uh, responsive and also of high clarity touchscreens, full HD resolution. It's not super bright, so if you're outside in a much brighter environment than we are now, because this is gloomy London, you will probably need to use something like a sun hood. And my last favorite feature for the purposes of this hands-on review will have to be the sheer amount of options that you get to record your footage on. Because yes, this camera can capture great footage, but what good is it if you don't have decent options to record on. Blackmagic have really thought about this and given us quite a few options. So as you can see, we have CFast, SD, and we also have on this side, an option to record to an external SSD via the uh, USB-C Type-C. Uh, now before we go with this review, I just wanna preface this by giving you my thoughts on what this camera actually isn't before I give you my thoughts on what this camera is. For me, this is not a mirrorless camera. That's obvious. It's not a DSLR, that's even more obvious. But despite the form factor, and despite the overall presentation, the price point, and the actual customer base uh, for this camera, I guess the major customer base, which is people shooting DSLRs, mirrorless. For me, this is not like any of the other cameras. And I'm trying to think of this as not my GH5S. I'm trying to think of this a Blackmagic Pocket Cinema camera as something completely different because at the end of the day, it really is. You get a choice of fantastic codecs. You get um, an insanely well-made uh, touchscreen and a great menu. You also have professional recording options such as CFast 2.0, which is a major plus. I mean, these are usually, uh, CFast 2.0 is usually found on higher end cameras such as the C300 Mark II. Even the Alexa Mini records on CFast 2.0 in the Amira. So uh, yes, the media is expensive. That's not fun when you have to spend three, 400 pounds. Along those lines, I wanna mention a few things about the autofocus and what this camera doesn't have, and that is continuous autofocus. This camera only has push autofocus, which will not track. Uh, with compatible lenses, uh, you can focus on different areas um, if you use the uh, touch screen on the back. However, it's not continuous. So if you're shooting interviews or anything like this, and you expect uh, this to be something like a 5D replacement or a Sony a7 III, 
This is not like this. The push out of focus on this camera is very basic. It's not continuous, as I mentioned, whatsoever. It's probably contrast based, uh, so don't expect any miracles. As a matter of fact, I think this is probably an option you probably want to use. On the bottom here, you may be wondering what this is. This is the Core SWX PowerBase Edge. This is an external battery. Technically, it hasn't been designed specifically for the uh, Pocket Cinema Camera 4K. It, is literally usable with any DSLR out there in a, or mirrorless camera. So if you have a GH5, A7S, these kinds of cameras, uh, a 5D or you know similar Nikons, you can use this with provided that you get the appropriate dummy battery. So in our case here, we have a LPE6 dummy battery that goes out via a, um, a barrel connector. And this battery is rather interesting because it's 49 uh, watt hours and it gives you about uh, three, technically three and a half hours uh, when it's 100% charged. And it, it does add some bulk uh, to this. Uh, as you can see, this has a V-lock, so it's V-mountable. You can use it on an Ursa Mini on the back if you want to use it as a, as a V-lock uh, battery. I've been shooting almost all day with this thing, and it's been saving my life. I have not changed batteries yet. Um, this is great. It just feels great not to change batteries. We can't really have a hands-on review without mentioning a few of the downsides of this camera. And yes, for some of you, these may not be major. For some of you, these may be complete deal breakers. For me, one of them is major. The other two, not so much, but let's go over them nonetheless. The first main problem with this camera, in my opinion, is the battery management. The battery situation with this camera is truly horrific. I've, some of you may already uh, know, uh, if you've been following my Instagram and my Twitter, I had a battery that stuck inside the camera. At first I thought this was the battery that was supplied with the camera, the Blackmagic uh, branded battery. Turns out it was a third party battery. And I know, I don't know, yes, yes. Some of you will say, well, you know, you use third, third party batteries. So, uh, you know, sure, you, they can, they're not guaranteed to be stuck there and not the same size or whatsoever. I disagree with that for the simple fact that I've had a 5D Mark IV, we've had a 5D Mark III before, I have a GH5S and I've used all sorts of third party batteries. And yes, they're Panasonic, they're a different brand, they're not Canon style but I've never, ever, ever had a battery get stuck inside a camera, which will prevent me from actually filming. And thank God this actually happened on a, on a project that I was filming for myself. I was basically filming for the website for you guys. And this wasn't like a, a, a paid shoot for a company where I'll be with a client. And to be honest, having a camera fail on me, it's happened only one time before in my life. It was one of the most embarrassing experiences of my life and it's something I've been dreading ever since. If you're a professional out there shooting for, uh, you know, for clients, for money, and you, know, you have a career, regardless of the level, I mean, I'm not on a high level or anything like this, but for me, a job is a job and a client is a client and I do my best to give all my clients 110% of my abilities and my equipment. And to have a camera completely fail on me by getting a battery stuck, which is 0%, avoiding it completely unusable, is a huge problem. Now, with that said, I don't want to sound too harsh. I did manage to take the battery out. Thanks to my good friends at Visual Impact, I went down to their rental department the next day, the next morning, because I tried at home to use tweezers, and I had a lot of suggestions from you guys on Twitter and Instagram, and I'm super thankful. In a grand scheme of things, things like that, I understand, happen. But it's kind of unfortunate when it happens to you. And thank God this did not happen on a paid shoot, because this would have been a complete disaster. But I still have no idea why it happened. The spring is fine. I thought it was the battery latch. The battery latch was working fine. It was just a problem of the battery was stuck in a way that even if you take the latch to the side and completely open it up, it wouldn't pop. It wouldn't have that kick from the spring. So whether the battery was um, too hot and it kind of expanded, which was some of the suggestions that I got online, it's possible. And I'm sorry that I don't have a complete and definite concrete answer of what actually happened. In my opinion, this is something that Blackmagic really needs to address with this camera. This is a big problem. Another battery related issue that I found with this camera is the very unreliable indicator when you have it on percent. So for example, it's showing 7.6 volts right now. And for me, it's, it's not easy to read in volts. I'm not that experienced with higher end cameras, which mainly have their um, battery um, kind of capacity left in voltages. Uh, I prefer to see it in percentage. So right now it says zero. Now this is a fully charged battery. This is actually the battery that came with the camera. This is the Blackmagic battery that they sell on their website for about 35 pounds. And as you can see, it's showing 0%. This will actually drop to about 50% or 75 or 25. It will kind of show these percentages which are very unreliable in my opinion because 
even if it shows 50%, I may have 75. I'm not 100% sure because I've had uh, batteries which are, in my opinion, at least halfway uh, full. Uh, all of a sudden, going to 20%, it becomes red, the battery indicator starts flashing, and it shuts off completely. The battery life on this camera is not great. Now, Blackmagic advertise, I believe, about 50 minutes to an hour. In my opinion, this is not, I've never been able to achieve this. Uh, I've used uh, real Canon LPE6N batteries uh, from the 5D Mark IV. I've used the one supplied with the Blackmagic uh, camera. I could never get more than 35 minutes out of a battery. And sometimes it would shut off at 25, sometimes at 20, but never more than 35. So if you're gonna buy this camera, be sure to either buy an external battery uh, pack like the Power Base Edge from Core SWX. I'm sure there'll be other companies out there on the market with power um, kind of boxes for this camera or really stock up on 10, even 20 batteries because I, I honestly, I can't tell you how long a battery will last. And this is one of the questions that I get asked the most. In my opinion, you really need to have between eight, 12, or even 15 batteries with this camera to be safe for a, a, a full day shoot. For me, the third downside of this camera will have to be the massive crop uh, when we use the window sensor mode to access the higher frame rates, anything over 60. So if you wanna do the maximum 120 frames per second, the crop is significant as you can see on the screen right now. Another downside is also the unreliable playback because it, instead of showing you uh, what you actually recorded in terms of the settings you recorded it with, it will actually show you the clip with the current settings and it's very difficult to judge your white balance because if you've changed your white balance since you've showed the clip, it will actually show you the current white balance which is incorrect. I really hope that Blackmagic release a firmware update soon to fix the playback issue. So that's pretty much it for this review. I hope you found the information useful. I'm planning on releasing uh, quite a few other videos about the Blackmagic Pocket Cinema Camera 4K. Any questions, highly welcomed. Please use the comment section below. Or also go on 4kshooters.net and type in your comments below the blog post. And until the next one, you guys have a great day.